Greetings and welcome to this week's edition of 401k Real Talk. This is Fred Barstein, contributing editor at WealthManagement.com's RPA Omnichannel and CEO at Trout, TPSU, and 401k TV. I review all of last week's stories and select the most important and interesting ones, providing open, honest, and candid discussion you will not get anywhere else. So let's get real. First story, and what is likely their final in epic battle, the DOL defended its fiduciary rule in a Texas court where regulations go to die against a motion for a preliminary injunction and to vacate the rule, preventing enforcement with some provisions due to be effective September 23rd. Remember that the Trump administration did not defend the 2016 rule. The agency claimed that ERISA does not exclude covering insurance agents and that the new rule complies with the 2018 case that overturned the previous iteration, being more modest in scope, no noting that the market realities are that insurance agents are not merely salespeople. The 2024 rule would cover all plan level advice, which few argue with, but the existential question is whether all financial professionals providing advice or guidance to participants, whether about rollovers or buying an annuity, must act in their client's best interest, which, by the way, is something people expect. Lurking is the pending Chevron Supreme case court case, which could allow courts, not agencies, to decide issues when regulations are ambiguous, essentially emasculating agencies' rulemaking authority. Next story, in a case where the rich keep getting richer, the PNI annual asset manager survey showed assets up 15.6% last year, buoyed by a 26.3% S&P in increase led by Vanguard, BlackRock, and Fidelity. Driven by concerns about fees and increased litigation, the groundswell towards passive investments continues as index funds not only grew faster, but they also beat their respective active co competition in all categories. Fees are the one thing investors can control, which makes the larger active managers with scale who can reduce costs more competitive, especially with the growth of CITs, as many large advisory firms and broker-dealers winnow their partner roster looking for more than just asset management, which could lead to further consolidation like the Putnam Franklin Templeton deal. Next story, in a move that shocked the REA world, taking $3 billion off the table, Fisher Investments sold a minority interest to an Abu Dhabi fund valuing the $275 billion firm at $12.75 billion at an estimated 20 times EBITDA. Though likely not a benchmark for smaller firms, it does show continued interest in investment advisory companies, especially by sovereign funds, as a related Abu Dhabi fund purchased 20% of CI Financial. Though touted as an estate planning tool, the infusion of capital could signal acquisitions, which Fisher, Fisher has mostly eschewed. Though maybe not related, there are rumors of change at their 401k solutions group, led by Nathan Fisher, who has grown the small market advisory division to an estimated $5 billion. Next story. The wealthiest finalists were recently announced with the retirement plan support and advisory services categories ballooning to eight as wealth management continues to be the 
only RPA media outlet covering the convergence of wealth and retirement at the workplace. Categories include 401k service and technology, record keeping and aggregator corporate leaders, broker dealer, record keeper and DCIO support and retirement income services. Congratulations to all finalists and I hope to see you at the Wealthies Award Dinner September 5th in New York City, immediately following the RPA Broker Dealer Roundtable, followed by the Aggregator Program October 4th through 15th at Wealth at Work. Finally, for literally decades, the in-plan retirement industry has been saying, the time is now, things have changed. Yet there has been precious little adoption by DC plan sponsors, participants, record keepers, and advisors. At the recent gathering of the fourth annual RPA Retirement Income Roundtable and Think Tank hosted this year by P&I, CIOs and product managers from aggregators, record keepers, and broker dealers, along with product manufacturers and connectivity companies, gather to bond, ponder the question of how and when this industry will give birth. Big challenges remain, but so do the obvious opportunities with retirement income at the crux of the convergence of wealth and retirement at the workplace. Read my recent wealthmanagement.com column about how the industry is collaborating to bring much needed help to DC participants as the debiization of DC plans continue. So those were the most important stories from the past week. I listed a few others I thought were worth reading, covering RPAs put AI to work. TRO launches retirement income comparison tool. CITs continue to grow, but limitations remain. Future Capital launches service to help wealth advisors manage held away 401k assets. Milliman wins their target day funds lawsuit. Please let me know if I missed anything or if you'd like to comment. Otherwise, I look forward to speaking to you next week on 401k Real Talk.